The half off gem sale is underway as we speak and even though it is like a solar eclipse that we usually gotta wait for, we're always hungry for the affordability of a new deck when we bust out the solar eclipse shades. But what are the best decks that you can predominantly build during a half off gem sale? That's gonna be the topic of this video. It's another suggestion from my main man over at the Discord, Kierski. What can I say? Man's got a big brain. A few caveats before I start this video. These decks are based on how obtainable they are during a half off gem sale. I'm looking for 70 to 80% of the cards being part of the sale for the deck to be eligible. Of course, this is going to rule out staples like Mystical Space, Typhoon, Book of Moon, or any of those other weapons. And if you're starting fresh, you may not get all the copies of all the ultra rare cards you would need, but you can still get a good chunk of these specific decks done during a half off sale with the right amount of gems. And if you're looking for how to get more gems, I have a guide for that as well. I'll be going over nine decks with a loose order at the beginning because differentiating their power level is a little difficult and it's neck and neck or debatable. However, the ones higher up that I'm going to talk about are a little more set in stone. So we'll be going from bottom to top. Here are some decks that you can build during a half off gem sale. The swole soccer sidemen aren't the greatest thing in the world these days. Once upon a time, they were highly competitive in dual links, and despite new support, they can't consistently compete. However, they are affordable and still capable of getting king of games. Ultra athletes are an archetype of earth warrior monsters that saw a predominant release in Gaia Genesis. They specialize in swapping each other out from the hand and field with special summons to get different UAs on the field for certain situations or for extra deck plays. Take UA midfield the only ultra rare in the core of this deck outside of Power Jersey, a newer ultra rare equip spell for the archetype that's only available in the newer box Eternal Stream. Midfielder is a level 4 and can special summon himself by returning a different UA monster from your field to your hand. Hard once per turn on that. Then during either player's turn, you can return one other UA you control to the hand to special summon a different UA from your hand. Hard once per turn on that too. He demonstrates sort of what I was talking about was swapping out monsters for certain situations like Ultra Athlete Perfect Ace who has a quick effect Omni Negate on a discard cost. Perfect Ace is a super rare in the latest box to be added to the half off catalog in Valhalla Calling actually. Other core cards are monsters that are rares in Gaia Genesis such as UA Dreadnought Dunker, the man that's been keeping Destiny Hero Dunker on the bench for years. He can inflict piercing battle damage and can also destroy a card on the field if he inflicts any battle damage to your opponent. And a UA Might Slug. He prevents your opponent from activating cards or effects when he attacks. And all these cards share midfielder's special summon ability. UA Stadium and Penalty Box are super rares in Gaia Genesis. Stadium being an archetypal field spell that lets you search the archetype and Penalty Box, which banishes an opponent's monster that battles your UAs and has a search effect for the archetypal spell cards while it's in the graveyard. From the builds I've looked at, around 60 to 80 percent of Ultra Athlete decks are available in the half-off gem sale, predominantly Gaia Genesis. Genesis and Valhalla Calling. It's an okay deck, it lacks protection and just sheer firepower, but competent and viable nonetheless. The biggest thing will actually be Ultra Athlete Signing Deal. This is a super rare spell card from Eternal Stream that can summon a Ultra Athlete directly from the deck. An amazing card for the archetype that's typically run at three copies, however a decent build can still be made without it or maybe one or two copies of it. And so the next deck we're talking about is For Hire. For Hire is an archetype of cute little kung fu panda extras with swords. Again, very debatable if they're better than UA or not. Maybe I just like fluffy animals more than swole, sweaty tryhards, but that's just me. They have varying types, attributes, and levels, and focus on special summoning each other to OTK with a card like Dinah, who can banish cards from your opponent's graveyard and has 2,500 attack on a monster that can be special summoned by the majority of the archetype. Like all of the For Hires, worth mentioning except for one he's a rare in the clash of wings mini box but then you get level three earth warrior for the archetype and he is a super rare in clash of wings he's a walking two for one yes i would like fries with that and special summon a monster for hire from your hand except himself and yes that's how the cards are worded it's so cute it's like they're, they're actual puss and boots boys and if a monster for hire is special summoned while you control him you can search any monster in the archetype from your deck to your hand which of course he can pull that off off by just 
using his first effect. Amazing centerpiece to the deck and can set up and search the OTK. There's also cards like Dompa and Recon who can destroy a face up or face down card respectively. Most fur hire decks will run cards for removal like Lightning Vortex or Treacherous Trap Hole to clear the opponent's field. The core of this deck really is in Clash of Wings. Typically monsters like Dyna, Recon, Dompa, Wiz, and Seal are all rares and as mentioned earlier, B is a super rare. They typically run Bravo. He's not in Clash of Wings but rather Infernity Destruction. However, he's only a normal in the box so he's very easy to pull. Based on the builds I've seen, around 60 to 70 percent of this deck is obtainable from the half off gem sale. Another deck that was historically very strong in Duel Links and even though it's not competitive anymore, it's still a fun deck to play that can throw people off guard and man these fuckers are just cute. Cyber Angel is a pretty nice archetype because it's almost entirely free to play. Dakini, Benson, and Edaten are all ritual monsters in the archetype that see play, and they are all available through Alexis Rhodes, either her level ups or drop rewards, and they are also available with tickets. Same goes for Machine Engine Ritual, an archetypal ritual spell that is currently limited to two. It's a quicker OTK ritual deck with Dakini being able to clear out monsters, Edaten boosting your Cyber Angel's attack, and Benton who can inflict effect damage and search. The main thing is actually going to be the non-archetypal searcher like Senju of the Thousand Hands who can search any ritual monster on his summon. He's available in Neo Impact, the second ever main box in the game. In my By the Box episode, I put him in what I called the great category at the time, which all the best cards would go into, just because he's that good of a searcher for really any ritual archetype. Some newer builds are running the gimmicky Prediction Princess cards that are in Chaotic Soldiers, but Prediction Princess and her Ritual spell are a rare and a normal in that box. They also run some of the Dijin cards that give ritual monsters good effects or protection when used as their materials, and all of them are either free to play or in half off boxes. New Impact actually being one of them, in fact. And sometimes Senju is only run at one copy, which makes this easier. This deck is 100% obtainable from half off gem sales, unless you count Prediction Princess builds, which it'll still be well over 90%. And it really is one of the premier free to play decks. You know, that could give you a reason to dust off some of those super rare tickets I know you haven't used. Okay, so this one's a little tricky. So Buster Blader just got new support, specifically in the form of a main box ultra rare and super rare. But we can look the other way a little bit to build right before that happened. Because Destruction Sword Memory is seeing play in Buster Blader at three copies and Buster Dragon usually at one. But we still got our appointment for surgery, boy. Buster Blader is a fusion archetype that focuses on really only one combo, and that's getting Buster Blader the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman on the field with DNA surgery. BBDDS, as I like to call him, gains 1,000 attack and defense for every dragon monster your opponent controls or is in their graveyard. And then he changes all dragon monsters your opponent controls to defense mode and prevents them from activating their effects. He can't attack directly, but he does inflict piercing battle damage. So without support, these effects may be phenomenal, but they are obviously too situational. Like, with blue eyes though, like, yeah, you fucked, man. But that's where a card like DNA Surgery comes in, since it can just change all your opponent's monsters into dragon type. See, Buster Dragon does this too, and that's why BB decks have evolved, but again, this old school way is still viable. The deck's biggest facilitator is Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman, since it can add the archetypal fusion spell from the deck to the hand, and can also search Buster Blader himself. So again, the deck is weird. While it is mostly available in a half-off gem sale, it's still a little pricey. Buster Whelp is an ultra rare in the Powers of Bravery mini box, and Destruction Swordsman Fusion is a super rare in it but then BBDDS is an ultra rare in the Crimson Kingdom main box. It's another card I did talk about in my episode of Buy the Box for Crimson Kingdom. And Swordmaster, who is used frequently, is a super rare in Crimson Kingdom. DNA Surgery is free to play. It really just is two half off boxes you'd have to go through. It's just the fact that two of the most important cards are both ultra rares. Three of each is optimal, but only one BBDDS is definitely viable, but ideally you'd want to get at least two copies of Buster One. Well, percentage is hard to say, but for the classic builds, we're looking about 50 to 75% of the deck being obtainable in a half off gem sale or is just free to play.
Oh, Dark Lord, seems like we never know when you're gonna pop up in competitive play again despite your restrictions. And I mean, oh goodness, Konami wanted this so dead, it's so nerfed. And they kinda are, as of right now, eh, still competent for sure, but more potential if some of their cards can become unrestricted. And honestly, that's the main reason they're higher up here. Dark Lord is an archetype of predominantly higher level Dark Fairy monsters that are keen at recursion. Cards like the limited to two Dark World Itch Shell can copy the effect of an archetypal spell or trap and then shuffle that card back into the deck. So not only do they get to use the effect again, the card is also added directly back to the deck, which is quite nice. Ixchel is one of those better ones, but Dark Lord Desire can non-destruction remove an opponent's monster from the field. Amdusk can add a Dark Lord card from your graveyard to your hand, as well as copy a card effect like Ixchel can. And that's the thing, they have great spell and trap effects to copy, namely the ultra rare banishment of the Dark Lord that can search any card in the archetype on a hard once per turn. However, if you're simply copying the effect, then that hard once per turn does not apply. But there's also Dark Lord Contract, which can special summon a Dark Lord from the graveyard, and the Sanctified Dark Lord, which can negate a monster's effect. Both of these cards are also limited to two. <laughs> Again, yeah, it's been nerfed into the dirt. But it's still seeing play and has a lot more potential because of that. The core of this deck can be found in Lords of Shining, with Banishment of the Dark Lords coming from Valhalla Calling, which happens to be the newest box added to the sale. Almost 100% of this deck is obtainable in the half-off gem sale, depending on the build. I have a soft spot for Crystrons, maybe I just like robotic animals, but even when this deck was tier 1 and ripping everything in the game to shreds, I still love them. Crystron is an archetype of water attribute machine monsters that specialize in destroying themselves and each other to proc effects that give them advantage, set up extra deck plays, disrupt your opponent, thin your deck, they really do a whole lot. Considered a big brain deck in the hands of a skilled player, they can be unstoppable at times. An example would include Crystron Sulfonir, who can specialize special summon himself from the hand by destroying a card and then can destroy himself when he hits the field to search and special summon any monster in the archetype from your deck, such as Crystron Sightree who can synchro summon on your opponent's turn. Cards like Thistavern and Smiger can search the archetypal spells, traps, and monsters respectively by banishing themselves from the graveyard, adding even more advantage to the deck if they're the cards you destroyed to summon Sulfonir. A lot of variables to it and their restrictions are comparable to the ones on Dark Lord, however, I think Crystron overall has been better off. Going over to a skill like Territory of the Sharks and using things like this bonkers mermail engine to go into Mud Dragon of the Swamp on a turn one. This deck is still expensive at its peak, but the majority of it will be in Cybernetic Rebellion. The biggest problem card is Sulfonir. He's arguably the best card in the deck, uh, consistently played at three copies, and unfortunately he is an ultra rare in that box, as well as Mermail Abyssus. And the super rare this Stavern is in Spirit of the Beast, which will be included in the half-off gem sale next time. However, 75 to 85% of this deck is in the half-off sale, depending on the build. They're fun, they're challenging, versatile, and stronger than you'd think. Just uh, not one of the easier ones to make on this list. Next up, we got a fan favorite, Six Samurais. Historically, at one point, was the strongest deck in this game. Six Sams are a warrior archetype that specialize in swarming the field, gaining advantage, and putting up devastating boards with their premier poster boy, the face of the franchise, Tom Brady-esque Six Samurai Sheehan. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can negate the activation of a spell or trap card and destroy it. And that effect is so good. Still is, always has been, and always will be. They accomplish going into him with their level 1 tuners like Secret 6 Samurai Fuma and their strong level 4s like Kizon who can special summon himself and the infamous Anishi who can quick effect bounce well before Cyber Slash ever came to the game. And that man's still wearing that Limit 2 badge alongside Sheehan's Dojo. Fairly simple deck all things considered. Dual wield can disrupt your opponent so badly that you can just win if it resolves and 6 Samurai United is a built-in engine for the deck. It just lacks consistent recursion and sheer firepower but is another deck that could lose some of its restrictions in the near future. The vast majority of this deck is found in Warriors Unite, making the deck 85 to 90 percent available in the half-off gem sale depending on the build. Of course, the biggest things are going to be Sheehan and Kizon, who are both ultra rares in that box. However, you certainly can make it work with one Sheehan. 
Vendred, baby. Vendred is an archetype about zombies with weapons. 10 out of 10, buy it, the end, I'll see ya. Now, Vendred is a fun and interesting deck that once again can compete better than you'd probably think. And the best part is the majority of this deck is obtainable in a mini box. For Vendred Slayer is an ultra rare in the box who can essentially set up a direct ritual summon as soon as he leaves the field, bolstered by the archetypal ritual spell cards such as the super rare Revendred Origin, which can use ritual materials from your graveyard. And then the boss monster Executor, who prevents your opponent from targeting any other card you control with card effects, and he has 3,000 attack and a pretty good floating effect too. Alongside, there is Evolution and Knights, a normal and a rare. This deck really isn't too hard to build. It really is just Slayer, but a competent version of the deck can be made with one or two of him, and you can still have fun with it. And basically all of it being in the Curse of Dread mini box, uh, they also use Ritual Searchers, such as the Ultra Rare Sonic Bird or Gishki Chain. They are both available in the half off gem sale too, just not as good of boxes. Sonic Bird coming from the first box, Ultimate Rising, in fact, and Gishki Chain coming from Abyss Encounters, the most recent box I've made a buy the box episode on. But Sonic Bird does have a bundle deal to note. And it's making 60 to 75% of this deck part of the half off gem sale, depending on the build. And they're zombies with weapons, so. These little guys have been growing on me, not gonna lie, I've kind of trashed them in the past, but I I'm starting to see it. It is still annoying that they don't seem to know when it's their turn on the merry-go-round, but they're pretty fun if you're not on the receiving end of that bullshit, and as of right now, they are arguably the best deck in the game. Magnets specialize in pulling each other out directly from the deck, such as Alpha, Gamma, and Beta being able to tribute themselves to summon a different magnet from your deck on either player's turn. So, you know, like, like a magnet, because it you know, because it pulls. Okay, I'll stop. Then their boss monster, <laughs> Berserkion. Yeah. You can destroy multiple cards on the field and close out games and can be directly searched from the deck by Alpha. The deck makes great use of tech trap cards like Super Team Buddy Force Unite and Powerful Rebirth since each magnet has an effect that gains advantage whenever they're summoned. The deck's inherent consistency is hard to describe, but it's so good. It's not just the big rock beatdown either. They specialize into going into rank 3 and 4 exceeds as well. And with them being rock types, it allows them to go into Gorgonic Guardian, a devastating turn one play. They are currently tier two with even more potential as the format goes on because this is one of the decks that has been the most ecstatic about getting a copy of Monster Reborn. So Delta is a free to play card and he's typically run at three copies. Same goes for Beta being a level up reward for both dual monsters Yugi and DSOD Yugi. Alpha, Gamma, and Berserkion all come from Guardians of Rock's mini box which also has Block Dragon and Block Dragon is mi powerful rebirth. It what is a borderline staple in this deck is available in Blades of Spirit mini box. And that is another one I have done a buy the box on. They also frequently use the free to play Kite Roid. In total, we're looking at about a surprising 75 to 85% of this deck is obtainable in the half off sale, depending on the build, which is actually very nice because they are by far the strongest deck I have talked about in this video. And so that's gonna do it for this video, just a quick little guide on some decks that you can build during a half off gem sale. I angled this video to give it more of a diversity depending on what would appeal to you as a player personally. Obviously, if we're talking about viability, I would recommend trying to build the Magnet Warriors during the half off gem sale, but at the same time, there's other good competent archetypes that might appeal to you more or may seem more fun to you, like Vendred or Six Samurai or Christron. So it's really just what you're looking for. This is just kind of some decks that I can present that you can look at and be like, oh, during this half off gem sale, I can maybe, uh, or I can wait till the next one. And I know that that's a deck I can build the majority of. So I hope this video was helpful in this regard. Another shout out to Kierski, the man with all the brilliant ideas. And I will see you guys in the next video.